So what is the next song that you would like me to play? Um, let's see. I believe the next one is Everyone Moves On. Once again, a great song. Um, and what was your inspiration from this song? Everyone moves on. Well, um, really, I was. It, it's, it's another spontaneous song. Really, uh, I was uh, sitting here in in uh, my living room and. Uh, it's a cool winter afternoon. Uh, I had the window open, and you know I could hear some kids playing down below, and 
I will always watch. I like to watch people, you know, and uh, people are walking by, and I see, you know, couples coming in, coming out, and, and it's, uh, it's very interesting, you know, and I just start, uh, took out my guitar, and I start playing, and uh, this tune just, just happens to come out, and, uh, and usually the, the music puts me in a, in a certain mood and the lyrics are spontaneous as well and um, it's really a story about uh, a man that um, that has problems uh, moving on in his life uh, that everyone around him is uh, is growing and moving but he realizes that uh, He's not changing. He's still the same. And it's because he wants to relive, hold on to the past. And um, he lives like in a fantasy world. But he knows that uh, nothing's changing because uh, he won't let it change. <clears throat> if I could. If I could fall in love, I'd let love be my boat, and I'd say to another love with my love, with my love. Every 
Do you think partly because of, as we were speaking before the song about having those masks and feeling the responsibilities for those masks, or do you think it's he's just stuck and is afraid to change? I think it's, it's, it's the fear of, uh, of having a new experience. Maybe it was the fear of, uh, of having it happen again, you know, and uh, wanting it to keep it the same, you know. We, I think that humans are creatures of habit, and we like routine, and we have our routines, and we have our security blankets, and sometimes relationships become a form of security blanket, but uh, I've realized in my life, at least, that... Um, there isn't really anything that's permanent, and um, you know, you you can't you can't just have this f fake security, you know. And the security is really within you and trusting yourself. Correct, and, and allowing life to to happen as it happens. And not, it's that balance of appreciating the moment and not getting overly attached to it correct so um, with these lessons that we're speaking of do you feel that <clears throat> you've really learned that magic balance oh gosh um no, not really. I think I'm. I still struggle with that. Uh, I think that it gets better every day, but uh, I still struggle uh, maintaining that balance and uh, leaving the past in the past and not letting it haunt me um, and continue to to change my mood. Um, I think that m many of us carry things that uh, in an instant, if we al allow it to come through, come forth in our mind, we're almost in that place one more time and, and we, be we begin to feel the, the emotion, the angst, the uh, anxiety, all those things, and it has a hold of us, you know? Um, and I think that sometimes that, that still happens, you know, and, and uh, you overcome something and, and you put it away, but it creeps out sometimes. It, it, it's, it's one of those things that for me it's been coming up a lot. It's that incomplete feeling, like something still needs to be done with that emotion or with that experience and yet I can't always figure out what I'm supposed to do with it. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and maybe it was the sense of hopelessness in that moment when you were experiencing those things that it feels incomplete 
And so you, you knew that you had to accept what was happening, but you also wanted to make it right, even though you couldn't. So that's where you have that sense of incompleteness that you, you that anxiety comes up again. Right. And in and, and it's accepting that there is no right or wrong. It just is. <laughs> it's it, exactly. And and just making peace with it and That's it. and accepting those emotions as they are. And and once I do that it's like, okay. It's okay. But as you said, every once in a while there's certain things that trigger those emotions and I think right now with the giant shifts of spirituality of consciousness that it's like those waves are coming in I think a little bit more frequently and people are having to deal with those vulnerable parts of themselves and those emotions yes and I think that your music and music overall really helps us Accept those, the ins and outs of life, the ups and downs, because <laughs> of, you know, there's so many songs that people put uh, an experience attached to those songs. Yes. And it can be helpful, but sometimes it's going to trigger you. And even though one time it doesn't, sometimes it hits you just right that it does and and that's okay <laughs> yes it's true so do you think that the more you have this adventure and the more that you have challenged yourself to more than what you have been do you feel like there is something that you're really working towards that you haven't quite created? Or do you think it's all just falling into place exactly as it's supposed to and not an overall plan? <laughs> uh, no, actually. it. Uh, I think that there's a lot more to be um, done and there's so much more music, so much creativity. Uh, and as far as I just let it fall where it falls, basically, you know, there, there are some things that we have control of and things that we have no control over. Um, and I think when it comes to uh, creativity, um, I just let it happen. And when it happens, you know. So with everything that you've gone through um, and the experiences of creativity, do you feel that because there is so much more creativity out there, more people are expressing themselves, do you feel that humanity has a greater chance to not totally screw them up beyond repair? Hmm. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, now we're heading into a, a very interesting uh, <laughs> arena. <laughs> and uh, I, I think that um, a lot of things are happening that I've seen. Um, and I'm not quite... Uh, in agreement with uh, many things such of this moral relativism that's going on now, you know, and it's become uh, much greater now, you know, uh, that there is no, there's no black or, or white, there is no right or wrong, there is no good, there's no evil, you know, kind of thing, and, and it's like, okay, um, uh, it's almost like there's, it's just a big mess, and, 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 and people don't know what to be, what to become, where they're going. Uh, and uh, I think that, that tells you where we're at in a society. Yeah, a lot of confusion, a lot of chaos, 
And, if, and a lot of people just kind of scratching their heads saying, how did we get here? Wait a minute. That's right. That's um, right. And it's, it's just interesting to have that inner knowing and foresight that I knew this was coming. If you do anything with astrology or if you're aware of all the undoing of humanity that is going on. Yes. Overall, I don't like the process, but I know it's heading overall in the right direction. So it does give me a little sense of the crap is going to hit the fan, but we'll get through it. I think so. Um, and and there is going to be a lot of chaos and a lot of confusion. I mean, just Greece alone saying, no, we need something better than what you're offering is really people finally standing up and saying, we deserve better than what government is offering. I think so. And, and I think the U.S. has a big wake-up call coming, and it's going to be hard and brutal. <laughs> But so much needed. Um, so is that why you escaped to Spain? <laughs> oh, no, 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 not really. Um, nothing at all. You know, I came here for, for love. And, and, and that's great. <laughs> that's the only reason why I'm here. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to get over there. I know I'm going to get over there. Yes. Soon, soon. Um, so we have one more song. And why don't you go ahead and give us a heads up what the song is? Um, let's see. Which one was this? If I could, if I, I believe. Could. That's right. That's right. If I could. Yeah, if I could. And what's the story behind it? Um... Well, it's a very simple story, really. Uh, it's just a, a thought about uh, someone that's longing to be many things. That uh, And one of the things is uh, finding that big love and um, is just thinking out loud, you know, uh, of what it would be like if I could. So in a sense, it's talking about manifestation. Yeah. Um, in a beautiful tune and beautiful words. So here we are listening to If I Could by Martin Spence. Y it, you, we're coming to the end, believe it or not, so I just want to have a last few questions with you on I know you're kind of living in the moment with your creative process and you have a new CD coming out do you have an idea of when your new CD will be coming out mm. right now it might be about another another month or two awesome so any plans to are you looking for gigs? So if somebody wanted you to travel in Spain or Europe, or if they pay your way, would you come to the U.S.? If, I, if they pay my way, we will talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're up for those options, huh? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I would like to, I have some ideas uh, of uh, doing some shows in Bilbao or in Pamplona and Zaragoza and um, maybe some other places nearby um, during the winter months I went to France and I did a show with some artists there uh, beautiful painters and um, it was it was really nice and I also did uh, a little thing with uh, an actor a well-known actor uh, Simon Andreu um, in Madrid also, 
Um, so it was, uh, it's been interesting, but I'd like to stay close and not have to travel so, f so much, you know, and so I, far. And that's a, another beautiful thing about the internet. You really don't have to. I mean, you could do a webcast, do a show on webcast. <laughs> that's true. Charge people to be a part of it and have your show right in your home or out on a patio or right. nearby. And that's the beauty of the cre the creative process now. The options are really endless. That's true. They for are. For you. <laughs> so any last thoughts or to give your websites where they can find your music again one more time? Or what last thoughts do you, would you like to share with the listeners? Well, if they, uh, they can always preview the music before uh, they buy it, of course, on cdbaby.com. And the uh, CDs that are available right now are, are Currents and From Her Room. Uh, my daughter did the cover for, for From Her Room. So, awesome. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, other than that, you know, I'm open to um, any criticism that people have or you want to just leave me a message. I always return all messages. <laughs> um, and I, another thing that you are open to collaborations, as you mentioned, you've done some things with other people. Yes. And and you are wonderful. Um, again, you have blessed me with the intro for my songs for my show for many many years, and I. Thank you so much. I, I I think your music is fantastic. So I thank you, Martin Smith, for your friendship. First, first and foremost, you are a dear, dear friend to me, and a fantastic artist. I'm not going to say just musician. You are an artist through and thank through. You. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, and always, I'm here. And, and he truly is. With that, this is Jennifer Hellman saying thank you so much for listening to AIR. Until next time, with each breath of air, we hope you gain new insights and information. Till next time, many blessings.